In this video we're going to look at the Python AppSec category on the Veracode Security Labs Community Edition. In the last video we looked at the basic terminal usage, just going through how to create files and list directories and move around in Linux and some basic bash scripting and crypto techniques. We looked how to generate RSA keys and encrypt files with AES and things like that and do some MD5 hash and base64 encoding. Um, now it looks like this is probably going to step it up a little bit. We can see this contains mass, assi mass assignment, header injection, replay attacks and JSON web token flaws. I've already started it, just had a quick look at the first section there. And we have six sections all together, the mass assignment, the power of none, HTTP header injection, JSON injection, replay it again, and key flaws in JSON web tokens. So we'll start with the mass assignment. These are all worth 10 points. We'll start with the mass assignment. And it says, discover how poor input validation on unexpected data could lead to disastrous results. So I'll hit resume here. We, we get a terminal. It's, it's taking a little, it takes a little bit of time to load this app up here. And in the meantime, we have some a block of text here telling us a brief history of data modeling. I'm not going to read out these entire blocks of text. If you're going through these labs, which you might as well do, they're free to register for, then you can read through these blocks of text and I'd recommend doing that. And it has some links as well to additional information and you can go and Google stuff as well. I'll cover whatever's important or summarize the sections. So here we have a brief history of data modeling and it's specifically telling us about this active record design pattern, which allowed column names to be related back to the properties of models directly and made it easier to work with objects rather than SQL queries. So what it's telling us is that there is with this new active record design pattern there was a problem which created a vulnerability with these active record models and that was found on GitHub so let's go and take a look at that. And it explains to us here that in 2012 the vulnerability was found with the Ruby and Rails service and the way that it integrated the, the active record pattern into its model handling. And here's how it worked. So the request would come in with the user input attached either in a get or a post request and a model would either be created or record located and all of this data was passed to it. The model or record was then saved back to the data source. The issue with this is it created a mass assignment vulnerability. Um, when the data was being sent to the model, there wasn't sufficient input validation happening as to what fields were being updated, and as a result, all fields that had incoming data were updated, even if they didn't exist in the form. So this allowed the Igor who found the vulnerability to make posts, update code in any GitHub repo, regardless of whether he had access to them or not, and more. So you can go and look at the an article about that there. And many other frameworks and libraries have also followed this pattern. Unfortunately, many have found the same, have been vulnerable to the same issue. So we've been given this app to go and take a look at. We can take a copy of the address there. And it's also telling us to take a look at the code, app.py. So we'll open it up with vim. App.py, it says go down to the where the roots are defined. So we have some imports here. We have our config. And then we have our roots where there's a on the home directory, the home page, if you make a get request, it's going to return index.html and it's going to assign users, calling this user manager object in the get all function. If you do a post request, it's going to add a new user and take uh, the password from the password form and the username. It's going to do. It's going to encrypt and hash it. It's going to take the name and email and create that user and it calls the same function this user manager get all if you supply if you try to edit a user you have to supply a user id and then it will call user manager it's going to call the same user manager object but it's going to call find user find by id with the user id instead of get all so i actually saw a vulnerability very similar to this probably the same um idea on Hack the Box recently there was a retired challenge which I did a, a retired web challenge that I did a video for called Baby To Do or Not To Do which seemed to have this issue. So let's open up the website as it's suggested and yeah it looks very similar. So we can in, in the Baby To Do or Not To Do challenge you could add 
or remove tasks and edit tasks and things like that and the vulnerability the issue with it was that you couldn't edit the tasks of other of other users but if you tried to get all tasks you could view view all the tasks of all users it didn't have the same validation checks in for the different functions really so yeah we've got the page here anyway let's create a user crypto crypto at cat crypto crypto we can save our user here you can see that it's added it we can go in and we can edit it we could go and probably change this password although there doesn't seem to be an option to log in or anything yet anyway so let's go back it was telling us to just go and visit the environment so let's go on to the next section okay so this section just tells us about the application and adding users it tells us that we can use these get and post requests to make changes and add a user you can see that we've already met the re requirement essentially it tells us to add a new user and then to go and have a look at the code in here so we can go and look in data and users.json and we can go and have a look at that we could format that out better as well if we wanted to open it up in something else let me open users.json in Codium oh. It's not going to format properly if you don't give it the correct file extension. All right, so we could. Oh, I expected that to format. All right, it's not going to. There we go. All right, I just had to d define a formatter. So to define a formatter, you can see that we have this user that we've added with this bcrypt hashed password, and that's all fine. If we, what about if we go and change that password? So let's see what the pass. There's the password at the moment. Let's go in and update the password, and let's go back to our application wherever it is go back to our code here I don't know does that refresh let's have a look <laughs> okay so that doesn't want to format let's have a look this ended with 8s let's see if this new one does okay so you can see that it's updated the password there no longer the same hash. All right, cool. So I don't think it was really asking us to do anything else there. It said create a new user, and then in the next step we'll use. In the next step we'll look at updated information and see if there's any issues. Okay. So this section is looking at how we can exploit uh, the mass assignment vulnerability to edit users, and it tells us that we have. Let's go back to app.py like it says and we have these user edit routes down here so we have the user edit it takes in the user ID and if we did that again you can see here user edit and we're ID 3 and at this point we can can we make some modifications here let me change that to crypto cats We can save that. We go back, refresh. Okay, so it updated the name, it updated the email, and we were able to update the password. What we weren't able to update was the username. But what it notes here is uh, the it's using the it uses the user manager save here. So it takes the user ID and then it takes request form to dictionary and the issue is that there's no validation to check what parameters it's actually updating so although the developer has said that we can update our name our email and our password right here there's nothing to say that if we don't also supply a username field and a username value that this won't take that and up and update it oops I just accidentally changed the code um, okay so let's see then what it's telling us to do here 
So this section is just explaining what I just explained there that that we can modify the we can add the username field as a parameter. So we could do that with Burp Suite or any other kind of web proxy. We could do it by adding another form field into the HTML as well, so client side injection and or as it's suggesting here we can use curl to send this. So in this example it's just doing the same thing that we would do whenever we click save but through the command line and here it's added the username as test as well as the as well as the usual parameters of the name, the email and the password. So is what's is it asking us to do is it asking us to update this? Open a terminal and copy and paste the following in, okay. So it's asking us to update, I guess there's another user already in there. Let's go. Yeah, it's asking us to update user one. Okay, so we'll go to the terminal, we'll do what it says. We'll paste that in. Oh, we can't use the keyboard shortcuts, forgot about that. Paste that in and then let's go back and refresh. And you'll see that we've updated the username to test. Cool. So we'll go on to the next section. And in this section we look at potential solutions. So it says that there are several things we can do to fix it. We could add in some input validation to make sure that the user doesn't submit something they shouldn't. We can manually assign values rather than pushing them all in. Or we can use a tool that includes functionalities to specifically mitigate against mass assignment vulnerabilities. So if we go through each of these possibilities, the first one would be, in this case, would be if we modify the code. Let's go back to our app.py. Here we have our user edit. and instead of just saving whatever the user puts in we could say if the user has submitted a username key delete it from the dictionary before you then save that now what it what it explains is the obvious problem there is that there could be any number of different keys that the user might try to inject values in with so if you want to blacklist if you want to check for every one of those that's going to be a difficult process so th essentially there's a difference between blacklisting and whitelisting is that if you decide to blacklist things that you're more likely to miss out edge cases and values that the developer might not think of that the the user does or the attacker does so in this case that's not an ideal solution the other solution that it had mentioned was that we could manually assign values rather than pushing them all in. So they they suggest that we could change usersjson.py. Let's go and have a look at usersjson.py. Uh, what sections in templates? usersjson.py and they suggest that we they could modify this and replace the user update user data which is right here user update user data they're saying that they could actually replace this and say username equals this name not username but the user's name <laughs> user email user password etc um, and do that manually for each one. They explain then that the problem is that it's just going to make make it less useful as a function and um, using it in multiple places will be more difficult. So they suggest that the middle ground here is the third option then which is to use a tool that includes functionality to specifically mitigate against mass assignment vulnerabilities and in this case they're suggesting we can look at this database tool and ORM called Orator. Let's open up the link before we move on to the next section. Here we can see it's a provides a simple yet beautiful active record implementation. So I guess this is a secure library that we can use to to make use of the active records. So let's go to the next section and check this out. Oh, we need to complete this section first. What did it ask us to do? Let's move on to the next section. I guess it's asking us to make the changes to the code as well as that. I'm not too sure. I'll uh, I'll grab this and go to 
or app.py and we'll put this in here so the user edit submit and we're just gonna okay we need to set the data first set data to equal this dictionary and then we're gonna pass in data after we've stripped out the username so we'll save that and then okay it's allowing us to go to next without changing that okay so as long as it just I guess it it wants us to implement one of the solutions that were available to us there okay and then we go on to the final section then which is protecting data with orator modules so as it had mentioned previously introducing higher code complexity introduces more security issues or potential for more security issues and uh, it suggests using tools like Orator to fix this problem. So previously the code was making use of plain JSON. It says we've updated that now due to it being a larger application. It's using a database instead. So it's using an SQLite database instead of JSON. And the Orator library solves the mass assignment issue by including functionality to define fillable columns. This configuration lets developers define which columns can be updated with an array of data pushed into the object rather than having to assign pro properties manually. In order to change over from using the JSON user manager and use the new orator based one, you just update the import. So let's go to our app.py. We're already in app.py. And at the top, we have this import user JSON as user manager. And it's suggesting that we should import user DB instead. And that's going to use the, the database. And then we also need. We have this fillable option in let's go to let's save this go to user.py which I guess okay it's letting me go next already but okay so this is already filled in in user.py we have this name email and password so if this was updated to include username it should also allow us to do the username so in fact we can try that out you'll see let's go back to our terminal if we run that command again well, we'll want to run the command again and change the username to something else. We'll say username this shouldn't work. Run that. We go back here and then if we refresh the page we'll see that it didn't update the username. And it also got rid of my old user. I'm not too sure what that's about. Um, if we go back to the code editor and go in here and say actually you can update the username if you want save that and then go back to our terminal run that again and try that out it didn't work kinda of feels like that should have worked maybe it doesn't work just for the <laughs> uh, in the lab Oh well, yeah, we we um, we know the idea anyway. Basically, we have to specify which fields here can be filled in the request. And yeah, let's go on to the next section. And so we finish this section. It tells us here that it addresses one question we might be left with, which is how do we update the username value if it's not on the allowed list for filling, and tells us that we can do that just with the static manual assignment. So it tells us we can go and have a look as well at the user db.py and then this is how it just says to look at the add user function. So that's been this section. Let's move on to the next section, which is the power of none.